hello hello so here I am welcome to my car don't worry I'm parked <laughs> so I decided to do a little vlog and take you guys to the barn with me I haven't done a vlog in quite a while and I've introduced Java on my channel a little bit I think in just like YouTube shorts or tiny little videos but I thought I'd do like a proper riding take you to the vlog show you around um, just like a proper introduction video so yesterday was actually my one year riding anniversary which is really crazy meaning a year ago yesterday I took my first ever riding lesson um, which is crazy you know not knowing that I would pretty much be completely changing my life and doing an overhaul of my lifestyle and six months later would be getting my own horse and yeah six months later after that here I am now today so it's been an intense crazy fun journey wouldn't have it any other way um, yeah I don't know going to the barn every day is the part of my day I look forward to the most and the one I enjoy the most so the barn is just a few minutes from my house so I'm not gonna look at you anymore I'm just going to take you there okay we're here now so I will go and show you around hello hello hi guys here he is hey buddy you want some carrots you want some carrots oh yes oh yes here you go yummy yummy all right so here i am with java i got all his grooming stuff all his tack um, and i just popped him in the cross ties to start brushing him and obviously because i'm new to barns and new to riding i thought it was pretty standard to use cross ties but apparently it's not so if that's not something you do at your barn totally fine um, you'll notice though, if you look at the top corner of the cross ties, of course we have breakaway cross ties, meaning they're actually just tied together by a tiny little piece of like string or something. So they can very easily be broken. Um, fun fact, Java has broken them many times, <laughs> especially when he first got here, um, either from like turning his head too quickly or walking forward too much or walking backwards, he would just break them. But what's really funny is that he never actually noticed that he broke them. So he never left or did anything. I just tied it back up. Um, anyway, that's it. So this is him. He's eight years old. He's 16 hands high. And I'm just starting the grooming process here really simply. Um, I'm using a curry comb to just loosen up all of the dirt and debris that's on him. He's also shedding quite a bit this week, so loosening up some of that hair. And he's being such a good boy today. He is so calm and yeah, he just seems to be in a really happy mood. So you noticed, of course, that the horses were in their stalls when I got here. Most of the year, pretty much all of the year, horses are Oh, and here you can see he's a very mouthy horse, like super mouthy. And 95% of the time that mouthiness is just curiosity. He's very curious. He wants to know what I have in my hands. Um, it's definitely like a request for connection. So I do like to just show him what I have in my hands, you know, and I know everyone does things differently with their horses. Um, but I'm, I don't know, like, I let him explore. I'm fine with it. We have other boundaries that come up um, in other scenarios, usually around food, and I'll show you that later on in the video. But as I was saying, so normally the horses um, throughout the year, they're outside during the day and then they get turned into their stalls at night. However, because it's summer, they actually are outside all of the time and they only come into their stalls during the hottest hours of the afternoon. So I had a lesson that day. That's why I was at the barn um, and it was middle of the afternoon. So he was already turned in, which is why he was there. And I think he just noticed my phone <laughs> at that time. And I'll speed this up. I just wanted to show you a little bit what he's like. He's so handsome. He's changed a lot since I got him six months ago. Um, we have a lot of flies right now, so you'll see sometimes he like kicks or something and he's not kicking at me. He's just stomping his feet or trying to get the flies away. 
I know they bother him quite a bit. So after I've done the curry comb, I'm just going in with a stiff body brush and this is to really get all of that dirt off of him. And you can't really notice it on camera, but like there's such a difference after I do this. And Java loves having his face brushed. He loves having his eyes rubbed and his head rubbed very gently. And I'm, of course, sneaking in lots of kisses while I can. Um, but yeah, he always really likes that. And I think it's just the cutest little thing. He's so cute. And sometimes I was trying to see if he would do it this time and he didn't, but often when he smells this brush, he does the Fleming response, which is like a little horse smile. Um, and I was hoping he would do it to show you on camera. He almost did it. You know, you could see he was starting to flip his top lip, um, but he didn't quite do it. So, oh well. But I don't know why. It's always he catches a little scent from that brush and often he'll do it. But anyway, so I'm just brushing him, getting all that dirt off. And yeah, I'm really impressed with how he is today. Like he's staying very still, being very calm. Um, it's not always like that, you know? Java is a very, very, very strong-willed, big personality, expressive horse. And um, yeah, some days he has a lot more to say and some strong opinions. Uh, but today, yeah, he was pretty much pretty chill, go with the flow, and I'll just speed this up a little. So I'm just going to finish brushing him all over. And I don't know if I mentioned it, but Java is a Percheron and Quarter Horse. Eight years old. Don't know his exact birthday, I just know that he was foaled in 2014. 16 hands tall just a beautiful boy. His color has changed so much this summer. Like he got some dapples and his coat lightened up, got a little bit more of like a reddish tint to it. He's just so pretty. And we ride English style. So we do dressage and jumping. He really has a great like hunter confirmation. Um, that's also what I prefer. I love, love, love jumping. It is so much fun. So I'm really hoping that we get better at that. I really have no ambitions of like competing or anything like that. I'm really not interested. Um, I mean, I say that, but yeah, it's it's just not something I think I'm interested in. But if I were to have to pick one discipline, that's the one I would go for. And here I'm just hoof picking. So getting rid of all the dirt, debris, rocks, mud, poop, <laughs> everything else that gets stuck in his hooves and I really think that's going to be the next part of my equine journey is learning about hoof health because his are a mess this summer. There's way more wear and tear on them like they just seem banged up and they grow faster and all winter I was fighting against moisture. I was trying to keep as much of the moisture out. I was using products to kind of like dry them out. And now in the summer, it is the total complete opposite. I am doing everything I can to keep moisture in his hooves because they're prone to cracking and they feel really brittle. Anyway, it's really frustrating. So he gets the farrier. Um, the farrier comes every six weeks. I swear in the summer he could go every three weeks easily. So anyway, I think that's really like the next part of the journey I want to learn about um, just because I want to be able to better assess what's going on. And I mean, hooves are such an important part of health. Okay, so I want to show you this because this is where we do have boundaries is around food. So one of the best things I've ever done is teach him back up. I first started with a, you know, an arm command and now he just does it by voice, but, and he pretty much does it automatically now. Whenever I have food in my hands, he will take one or two steps back and I can just say back up and he'll take a step back and then he gets the treat reward only because since he is a super mouthy horse, he would mug you for food and not in a very friendly way. Um, so we really, I really needed to like nip that in the bud and it was a problem, like even turning into like nipping and, um, yeah, just some really not nice, not good behavior that I felt very overwhelmed by. So actually for the first two months or so, I'm just applying hoof oil here, as you can see, but for the first two months, I actually didn't do any hand fed treats with him. I would just throw treats on the floor, put them in his ball, whatever, um, just because he needed to learn proper boundaries around people when it came to food. 
and teaching that backup cue has changed the game for us. And it's interesting because he's so motivated to learn. I'm now slowly getting into like um, trick training and like positive reinforcement, um, you know, what you would call like clicker training, but I don't have a clicker. I just use good or yes as my cue. Anyway, okay, so I'm saddling him all up. You can see he's really good, not girthy at all. Like he's such a chill, chill dude. The only time sometimes that we have issues with is the bridle. So I ride 50% of the time I ride bitless with a Dr. Cook bitless bridle. When I know I'm going for a hack or if I know that I'm jumping outside, um, I do use my bit bridle. So it's a French link snaffle with a little um, eggbutt cheek piece. Um, and he does okay, but honestly, it's like, it's me. I'm a little awkward with the bridle. He's a little awkward with the bridle. I don't really know why, but it's okay. We get through it together. It's definitely a lot easier when I use the Dr. Cook bitless bridle and he does so good in that one. Like he really, really does well. So about 50-50 with both. And now we're ready to go. So unfortunately we had to use the indoor arena today. The outdoor sand ring was not available, um, which is a bummer because it is so much fun to be able to ride outside. Um, in the summer when the weather is good, but it's okay. We're indoors and today was actually a private lesson and it's 45 minutes long. Um, usually I have another student with me in this class and I wouldn't have filmed if someone else was in there, but she was unavailable today. So I got this like private lesson and it was a lesson with one of my two coaches. So I have two. Um, this is Rebecca Jackson and she specializes in dressage. So she really went in and we did like a full on private clinic on this elusive concept of inside leg to outside rain. I think the funniest thing with writing is like the terminology that you use. It can get so confusing and it's so vague and ambiguous. So it was really helpful for me to have her um, really break everything down and show me exactly what to do with both hands, with both legs, helping Java understand. Um, we were really working. We only did walk and trot and almost all of it was really done at the walk. Um, it was, so it's like, it's not the most fun video to watch. Obviously I'm not going to show you this whole thing. I'm just going to do little clips um, because visually it's like, kind of boring, but it was really, really, really helpful for both of us. So we worked a lot on 20 meter circles and really getting Java to bend through his entire body by again, using that inside leg to outside rein, um, really working through our corners. And by the end of it, while we were trotting, we actually got our first bit of self carriage and really proper bend through Java's body, which is awesome. <laughs> like, which I'm really, really, really happy with. And she was really happy with it. Um, so Java is actually kind of green as well. He's not, I don't know, he hasn't, he definitely doesn't have more than like a year and a half, I believe, under saddle. So we're kind of learning together. And as many of you will know, if you ride, new riders are definitely not good teachers. So as part of my boarding package, I actually pay for my other coach who's not in this video. Her name is Michelle Piper. She is a trainer. She trains Java twice a week. So because she's, you know, extremely skilled and, you know, is a, a phenomenal coach and teacher, she works with Java twice a week to really, um, you know, get him where we need him to be so that I don't accidentally mess him up with my beginner mistakes. But anyway, he did really, really good. This was very helpful for me, um, especially that whole like outside rain to catch that shoulder and control the shoulder. I just did not understand how my rain was supposed to do that, but uh, we got some really beautiful movement from him. And it's crazy how much it's like physically we didn't do that much. You know, this was a very chill lesson, mostly at the walk, a little bit of trot, but 
you could tell that his brain was fried by the end. Like he really worked so hard to understand what we were asking of him. So I'm really proud with what he, how he went and what he did. Um, and it was a really, really helpful lesson. So hopefully I'll be able to continue recreating this on my own. Um, so that, that's pretty much it of what I'm going to show you from this because honestly, it would just be, I think, too boring and it's really hard to get a good angle in this space with my phone camera. But to cool him out, I decided to go for a hack. So here's the next part of our time together. What a good boy. Did so good on his lessons. We're going to try a mini hack. Yesterday, he did not want to go. He was still very scared. We're gonna try to work through it. I think he's in a good mind space right now. Both feeling calm, confident, relaxed. Maybe I spoke too soon. <laughs> okay, I'm putting the phone away because I need to focus. All right, that was really hard, but we're doing it. I had to get off, hand walk, get back on, get off, hand walk, get back on. But we're here, we're outside, I'm proud of him. This is the last leg and he's walking forward, but still in a very calm way. Doesn't seem alarmed. Hopefully it'll just get easier and easier the more that we do it. And yeah, I don't know. I don't know what he's afraid of. Of course we are alone. It'd probably be easier if I had another horse with him. Um, I'm going to do that in a few days. So anyway, very proud. I mean, sort of, cause I know he can, he's done it before better. Oh, I'm sorry. There's bugs. Okay, I'm putting the phone away. I need both hands and both reins. Okay, so I'm just untacking him um, to explain what happened. So basically, we went out on our hack, which is just like a little mini trail ride in the back where the property is. And he did not want to go out. Like you saw him walk on the road. And as soon as we reached the end of like where the dirt ends and the grass begins, he really did not want to take one more step forward. And I worked for a solid 10 minutes at first, like getting him to take a step, halting, praising him, reassuring him, trying to get him to take another step. He wanted nothing of it. He was turning in both directions. He started backing up. I tried a different technique of applying pressure and really like being insistent. We are going here. Let's go. He did not respond well to that either. He was terrified. Basically, the more pressure I put, the more counter pressure he applied. And I didn't want to like cross his threshold to the point where he feels like he has to be in a fight or flight type of situation where he's either going to bolt on me or buck or rear or anything like that, which he's not done. Um, but still, you never want to get them to that point. So I was like, okay, new strategy. I got off and I just hand walked him down the trail. And we do that all the time, which is why I was so surprised that it was an issue. I hand walk him down this path all the time. And as soon as I got off and we walked together, there was no problem. So I walked a little bit of the trail with him and then I decided to get back on and I got him to walk like quite a good ways down and then the same resistance applied or like he started getting really anxious really unsure did not want to step one more foot forward was backing up was turning was you know putting up a real battle did the same thing hopped off walked him a little bit got back on we did more trail that happened one more time where he could not go forward it was crazy i got off i hand walked him you know then I got back on and then we finished it. So it like it was not a smooth process, um, but whatever. I'm hopeful that it'll get easier every time we do it. And, you know, maybe I did some mistakes with that. Um, I'm obviously going to talk to my coach about it next time I see her, but it is what it is. You know, they're big animals. They have their own feelings, their own thoughts, and their own very real fears. So now I'm just like grooming him, untacking him. You can see he's a little bit sweaty from our ride, even though all we did was walk and trot. It was like one of the easiest physically, like one of the easiest lessons he's had in a very long time, but it was still a lot of work uh, for both of us. So once he's all ready to go, I'm also applying some fly spray on him and I'm going to bring his fly mask and I'm turning him out to the pasture. So he's going to be out in the pasture tonight, which is a lot of fun for him. All right. So we're done for the night. Java is going to be in the paddock. 
or in the pasture. So he literally has like all of the space, but he chooses to stay <laughs> close to the gate. Um, he won't be alone in here. So his other buddy, Red, that chestnut gelding you saw at the beginning of the video is going to be coming in here with him. He'll be here all night till noon. And then he goes back to the stall and then gets turned back out. Um, yeah, Red is just in a lesson right now. So he'll be turned back out shortly. Um, but yeah, I guess that's pretty much it. So I'm sort of, I don't know. It went okay, you know, the lesson was, the lesson was good. Um, I'm a little, little disappointed that I couldn't get him to properly hack out only because, I mean, we got through it eventually, but I had to get on, get off three times, um, which was really frustrating. I'm finding it especially frustrating or like a little discouraging only because I know he literally hacked out a few days ago on his own with my trainer you know she took him back there and they did some jumps and did the whole course and with me it's just not happening that way but oh he's peeing I won't put that in the shot <laughs> um you know I know she has like 20 years of experience and I have one so no point trying to compare to her but I kind of can't help but to compare I'm like I wish you know, that's probably like a like a generic equestrian student complaint. It's like you have an issue with your horse, like you can't get them to go forward or you can't get a certain transition or they root or, you know, like whatever the issue it is that you have with them, like you complain and you try everything and you can't do it. And then your coach gets on and it's fine and effortless and <laughs> the issue magically disappears and you're like, why? <laughs> so I'm sure I'm not alone in experiencing that type of problem, but I am hard on myself. Um, and I was, I really thought we were going to get it. You know, he, we were both feeling very calm, very confident. He just, I don't know, there's something over there that he just does not want to walk past. But as soon as you get on the ground, I can lead him on the ground without issue. He's not afraid of anything when I'm beside him. It's only, um, it's only when I'm mounted that it doesn't work out. So anyway, we'll keep working on it, but thank you so much for watching. I don't, I can't even really see the screen. So hopefully this worked out, but um, yeah, thanks for watching. This was Java. If you would like more equestrian vlogs or if you want to follow our journey a little more, um, I do have an Instagram account for him, Java Cup of Joe. So I'll link that in the description. I share pretty much every day more riding and more on the ground stuff and updates but um yeah the good the bad the ugly it's a journey and we have a long way to go i've only had him six months and he's only eight years old i plan on having him for the rest i mean forever for the rest of his life and i plan on riding for as long as i physically can so we'll get there we will get there. Okay, please subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you soon.